Looking at Ottawa and again anticipating a major announcement from the federal government today, a compensation package help for Canadians who are facing tough economic times because of uh, what coronavirus is doing to the economy. So we're understanding from our CBC News reporters it's at least $25 billion to workers and small businesses through, we're told, existing programs like the Canada Child Benefit, changes to EI to perhaps also encompass part-time workers, contract workers, that type of thing, give them access to the benefits. We will have live coverage for you whenever it gets underway. We understand the Finance Minister, Bill Morneau, will be part of this as well, and the Prime Minister, and live coverage to come with uh, Rosie Barton anchoring from Ottawa when it begins. But the key thing is this is help from the federal government for the workers and the small business owners who are hurting. We're answering your questions about this today with Howard Levitt, who's a, an employment lawyer in Toronto, senior partner at Levitt LLP, one of the biggest employment law firms in Canada, in fact. Mr. Levitt, welcome back and thank you very much. Let's jump right to questions because we are getting many from our viewers and we appreciate them so much. Min Jay writes to say her daughter is five months pregnant, already has two children and works in health care. Can she leave her job temporarily to protect herself and by extension her children and her unborn child and receive unemployment benefits? If the employer is taking the right steps, at this point employees have no right to walk away from the workplace. I understand people's apprehensions, but realistically all they could do is say, I feel in danger, try and work it out with the employer. And if the employer will say, no, you must come to work, and especially if you're a healthcare worker, they want you at work right now more than ever, then they have to call an a government occupational health and safety inspector will come in and give a determination over whether or not it's a safe environment or not a safe environment. But at this point, generally speaking, employers, as long as they ensure that people who have any kind of cold symptoms or alternatively have been out of the country in the last two weeks, stay out of the workplace, employees still have an obligation to come to work, and especially healthcare workers. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is not a healthcare worker. This is a question from Debbie O'Callaghan. She's a seasonal worker in the tourism sector who's supposed to return to work at a hotel in Ontario's Thousand Islands area. Her start date is the 1st of April. Obviously, things have been postponed so much by coronavirus. Her unemployment is going to run out in the middle of April. Is there any talk about seasonal workers being able to extend benefits? I, there have been talks from the government about various things. I think we're going to be finding out to, to, later today if that happens or not and exactly what the extent will be. But it's only been talked so far. We're going yes. to know later today. But You're if she has been supposed to come back on a certain date and they extend that date, she actually has a legal right to sue for compensation if the date has previously been agreed to. Employees actually have legal rights already even despite whatever the government is going to do or beyond what the government is going to do. If she has a date to return to work and they extend it, she has a right to sue for that period of time. That's good to know. And Debbie Callahan, Debbie O'Callaghan, thank you very much for the question. And you're quite right. Our reporting so far on this, the aid going to be delivered to Canadians, we understand through existing programs like EI, changing who's eligible. And what we're hearing from Ottawa is it will be extended temporarily to the self-employed and part-time workers. So, yes, discussion to this point, but it should become concrete, Howard Levitt, a little bit later on today. Dee Smith has a similar question, and perhaps our answer is the same. Her daughter is self-employed, and all of her clients have cancelled. She's been self-employed for about 18 months and prior to that paid into EI for about 13 years. Will she get some help? Well, the first question is this. Is she genuinely self-employed? Most people who think they're self-employed are actually dependent contractors. They primarily work for one company or institution or organization or are actual employees. And either an independent, a dependent contract or an actual employee has legal rights already. So, that's the first question. Is she genuinely an independent contract, which usually means you have many, many different clients and many di different companies that you work for, or an employee? If you're an employee, you have all the rights of an employee. In conclusion, I just want to raise a question. I'm going to answer it myself because I know that Heather Halpenny wants to know, is there any change coming to the deadline for paying personal income tax? This too, Mr. Levitt, we are hearing in our bureau in Ottawa that the government is expected to extend the deadline for filing your tax return. Quebec has already done that for its separate tax return. So that is something we should hear about more uh, extensively today. That's one of the major stories that we're following out of Ottawa today. The other is the financial aid package to come. 
come. And you've been asking so many fantastic questions about the economic turmoil, how it affects you, what happens if your workplace is closed down, do you get benefits, what compensation are you entitled to, where do you fall under employment insurance. We have to thank Howard Levitt, who's an employment lawyer and a senior partner at Levitt LLP, one of the biggest employment law firms in Canada. You've been accompanying us through all four hours, Mr. Levitt, and we really appreciate it. And I know our viewers do as you've answered their questions. Uh, this is from Diane. Diane has an online business with two half-time employees. There are crickets in the office. Diane, I'm sure you're not alone. Sales have just stopped. Can you clarify the conditions of layoff? Because you've talked about potential liability. So this is really good because yes. we've talked a lot this morning about where the employee stands in terms of rights and entitlements. But this is from the employer standpoint. So what are the conditions of layoff? Sure. Unionized employees can be laid off and have no recourse. But with respect to non-union employees, which represents 80% of Canadians, it's much more difficult. Unless you have a contract of employment saying that you can lay off and recall, or that's something you've been doing for years, for example, you're a seasonal employer, fair enough. But for the but for 95% of employers, there is no legal right to lay off. It doesn't matter that it's in the Employment Standards Act. There's no legal right to lay off. And if you do, it's a wrongful dismissal unless you pay them for the time laid off. So as you lay them off, you're triggering a wrongful dismissal, allowing them to sue you as if they've been dismissed, which could be 12, 24 months pay. Second question, and this will have to be our final question, but it gets right to workers' rights in the workplace at this time of concern about the transmission of COVID-19. Dave Caligari writes that his wife works for a national retail pharmacy chain. She's a cashier. It is not possible for her to practice the minimum social distance recommended, that, that uh, two meters, while serving customers. And in addition, she must handle the customer's cash. The employer is not providing masks or gloves, but will provide hand sanitizer. Can she insist on protective equipment? What are her rights if she feels unsafe at work? Yes, uh, there's actually a book written on this by Joel and Archibald, but, but I'll, if they want to get more deeply into that issue of safety and the rights of employees for safety, but the answer is yes. She could insist in that context on full mask and the proper masks, not most of the masks you see around, but the ones that are actually prophylactic and protect you. And if they won't give her that, she should call an occupational health and safety inspector who will order them to do that, or she could just stay home and insist on being paid. Mr. Levitt, I can't thank you enough. Really appreciate your responding to our viewers at this time of uh, a lot of concern and a you lot know, of worry about afraid, the future. Go ahead, sorry. People were, afraid, people were afraid of the illness. I think people are more afraid right now, even of the illness, about their jobs and their financial security. People are terrified right now in Canada, and they have and they have good reason to be. So I'm happy to help. Well, you've helped allay some of the concerns that there are rights and places to turn to get these things answered, and certainly rights yes. under the law. So thank you very much for the time today, Howard Levitt, an okay. employment lawyer. He's based in Toronto.